Section 53 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Ader. Chapter 12 on the Psychogalvanic Phenomenon in Association Experiments, Part 6. Extension of the points of view obtained in Part 2 to the material as a whole. Reaction time and galvanic deviation. We shall review in this section the mutual behavior of these two complex indicators in their connection with one another and shall refer to further conditions which lead to a disproportion of these two values. From the experiments we have learnt that, as a rule, a too long reaction time corresponds with a too long deviation. It has also been shown that, as a rule, with the prolongation of the reaction time, there goes an affective process. Footnote. We shall find there are exceptions, to which we shall refer later. End a footnote. We shall not be in error if, with Jung, we make this affective process responsible for the prolongation of the time. But we have given sufficient instances of exceptions to the ratio between reaction time and deviation, which are largely due to the influence of a perseverating emotional tone. We have seen that in cases where an emotional tone was handed on from an earlier reaction, there was no question of any direct ratio between these two factors in the following or next following reaction. That, on the contrary, when the perseverating complex is very strong, the ratio is inverse. The time is prolonged and the deviation shortened. I have sufficiently explained the reason for this. We saw a second cause for this prolongation of the reaction time, without a simultaneous increase of the deviation in the occurrence of an intellectual feeling in Nalowski's sense. This is of no practical importance, but is of theoretical interest. It was due to a feeling of uncertainty when the stimulus word was not clearly understood. It was shown that these cases are extremely rare because the conditions for the occurrence of purely intellectual feelings only arise exceptionally in the association test. To the example, tame, wild, when tooth was understood, I will add another that seems to me beyond criticism. Subject number 16, Physician. R. 14. Craft. Boat. R. T. 21. In parentheses, 9. G. D. 7. In parentheses, 19. Footnote. The figures in parentheses give the probable means of the two values for the whole test, the values only having a meaning when compared with these probable means. End of footnote. He hesitated whether I had said craft or crafty. Finally, he decided for the former. It is easy to see that when two words which clang emerge, neither of which has any particular emotional tone for the patient, a certain time is spent till the subject decides on one. We might speak of a selection time, which is added to the reaction time in the strict sense. This hesitation did not here produce any effect, for the deviation is still below the probable mean. The indistinct apprehension of the stimulus word is often followed by its repetition or by a what. In such cases, the reaction time is particularly long, because I only let go the watch spring of the hand when the real reaction word is pronounced. The size of the deviation in such cases depends upon whether an intellectual feeling or an affective process is connected with the repetition of the stimulus word. The latter is commonly the case. I have some distinct examples of the former. Subject number 13, female attendant, 82, bend, 
end, beginning, RT12 in parentheses 9, GD1 in parentheses 2. Subject number 12, female student, 4, prick, what, pain. RT18 in parentheses 11, GD3 in parentheses 5. 6, long, what, many. RT26, GD3. 15, stalk. What? Flowers. RT27, GD5. The following case of disproportion between reaction time and deviation seems due to the difficulty of the word. Subject number 11, uneducated man. Salt, mineral. RT18 in the parentheses 9. GD2, in parentheses 2. Delayed reaction times are often seen at the word salt. At present, I can only find the clause in a certain difficulty in finding appropriate associations. Pepper and bitter are the commonest. The subject had, like many uneducated persons, taken the stimulus word as a question. What is salt? The correct answer gave him intellectual difficulties, without getting excited about it. The following delayed time seems partly due to special intellectual effort. The reaction occurred in test 2C. 82, narrow, pass. RT35, in parentheses 14. GD2, in parentheses 5. We saw that the reaction took place under the influence of a perseverating emotional tone. But the excessive prolongation of the time seems to require explanation. He wanted to say narrow-hearted, which is extremely emotionally toned for him. In order to suppress narrow-hearted and to find the harmless narrow pass required severe intellectual effort made still more difficult by the perseveration. It was remarkable that despite this repression and affect, the deviation was so slight. I cannot avoid the impression that we had here an inhibition of innervation by the intellectual effort which made such demands upon the subject's attention. Whilst we can show that, besides perseveration, Intellectual difficulties may lead to a prolongation of the time without prolongation of the deviation. Those cases with the deviation, but not the time, is prolonged are found chiefly when there are verbal reasons. These are generally cases of complexes which pass unnoticed in the reaction time because the subject was able to slip in a verbal association. We have seen that emotive inhibitions are manifested with difficulty in such associations. This may be due to the strong pathway between the associations which then rapidly follow each other, although other associations also become aroused. Very often, however, the reason is that the verbal association that slipped in was already formed before the complex became generally aroused and could make its whole inhibitory action felt. I have often observed this in myself. The deviation, which follows much more slowly, has time to come under the influence of the complex. Other examples. Subject number 22, male attendant. 61, law, opposed. RT8 in parentheses 10. GD24 in parentheses 14. 69, part, have, RT8, GD20. 75, family, relations, RT8, GD25. 82, narrow, hearted, RT8, GD17. 83, brother, love, RT8, GD17. 84, Injure, joy, RT7, GD46, 89, fire, cause, RT6, GD25. Subject number 12, female student, 
62, love, have. RT 11, in parentheses 11, GD 9, in parentheses 5. Subject number 19, doctor. 79, book, have. RT 8, in parentheses 9, GD 16, parentheses 5. 88, kiss, like. RT 8, GD 12. He had heard this reaction in a great many subjects. Subject number 2, 45, tooth, ache. RT 8, in parentheses 14. GD 53, in parentheses 5. Subject number 18, attendant, 68 paint, painter, RT9 in parentheses 14, GD7 in parentheses 2. Clang associations and galvanometer deflections, action of unconscious complexes upon the galvanic deflection. Before leaving the individual analyses, and proceeding to the purely statistical working out of our material, I must again refer to the Clang Associations, which will give an opportunity to study the action of unconscious complexes upon the psychogalvanic phenomenon. Footnote. We shall see that these are not unconscious complexes in Freud's sense, but only suppressed complexes, that is, they were once in consciousness and can reappear there at any time. Freud's foreconscious. Freud understands by unconscious complexes in the strict sense, complexes which have never become conscious to the person and which can only be brought into the conscious by psychoanalysis. End of footnote. In the analysis of test one, we were able to prove that the Klang reactions which arose from distraction of attention due to a previous complex showed a too small deviation, whilst those which themselves awoke a complex had a too long one. We also saw in the examples Kurter, Spurter, R51, and reactions 92 and 38 that beyond the contact connection by the Klang association, there was a deeper link between stimulus and reaction word. In all three reactions, the Klang association was determined by a complex, which the stimulus word aroused. In reaction 38, repent, spent, perseveration also took part, so that the deviation itself did not exceed the probable mean. The complex participating in the disturbance was indicated on the galvanometer by the subsequent rise of the curve. When a perseverating emotional tone had caused both the deviation and the clang association, no deeper connection could be demonstrated. R32, ring, swing. R37, spec, neck. And R52, divorce, force. What we had been able to prove in test one was also found in the clang associations of the other tests. The grouping together of cases like divorce, avoid, is very informative. Of 14 subjects to whom the word divorce was called out, five reacted with avoid. Footnote. In English, divorce, avoid, is a clang association. In the German, it is a rhyme. Scheiden, Weiden. Translator. End a footnote. We will first give two cases where there was also perseveration, and then three where complexes were at work. Subject number one, 52, avoid, divorce, RT9 in parentheses 9, GD8 in parentheses 8. Subject number 23, doctor, 52, avoid, divorce. RT11 in parentheses 11, GD6 in parentheses 7. In both these cases, there was the perseveration of an emotional tone. In subject number one, this came at the preceding reaction, which, as we saw, aroused a very strong complex. In subject number 23, perseveration is also observed. It is due to 50, 
unjust just. RT 11, parentheses 11. GD 13, parentheses 7. Upon which follow. 51, frog, water. RT 12, GD 5. 52, divorce, avoid. RT 11, GD 6. The complex in reaction 50, perseverating in reactions 51 and 52, is objectively shown by the long deviation. The reaction time is, as so often, only prolonged in the next reaction, 51. Subjectively, the complex was fully confirmed, for the subject acknowledged that he had had to fight a great deal against injustice and possessed a strong justice complex. In the three other cases where there was a complex, the deviations were very prolonged whilst the time was only prolonged in one case. Subject number 12, female student, 52, divorce, avoid, RT 19, parentheses 11, GD 12, parentheses 5. Both words showed the complex. She explained at once that the reaction made her think of a much-loved girlfriend who had lately married and left Zurich. This friend, or rather her marriage, plays a great role in the experiment. Subject number four, educated woman. 52, divorce, avoid. RT 11, parentheses 11, GD 15, parentheses 5. One of the rare cases where the clang association caused by a complex has, for no obvious reason, no time prolongation. But the deviation which is thrice the probable mean, is enough. The emotional tone is here on a void. Subject number 19, the writer. 52, divorce, a void. RT 8, parentheses 9, GD 8, parentheses 5. The short reaction time is explained by the reaction having slipped in from tests carried out on others. Still the complex comes out, and is recognizable by the galvanometer. The emotional tone was on a void. I grouped these reactions together. Subject number one, divorce, a void, RT9, parentheses nine, GD5, eight. 22, divorce, a void, RT11, parentheses 12, GD6, parentheses seven. Clang association due to perseveration. 12. Divorce, avoid. RT 19, parentheses 11. GD 12, parentheses 5. 4. Divorce, avoid. RT 11, parentheses 11. GD 15, parentheses 5. 19. Divorce, avoid. RT 8, parentheses 9. GD 8, parentheses 5. Clang association due to complex. Twice I found the rhyme to prick, brick, but on both occasions, neither complex nor perseveration could be discovered. But the stimulus word to prick is the fourth one in our list, i.e., it comes quite early, when there is still some excitation about the experiment and the attitude towards the meaning of the stimulus word is still labored. It might be said that the distraction of attention is here due to the perseveration of a complex, the complex which refers to ideas about the test itself. The following is another instance of the effect of perseveration upon clang associations. The probable means are 17 and 10. Subject number 15, female student. 11, young, old. RT 24, parentheses 17, GD 28, parentheses 10. 12, ask, answer, RT 23, GD 29. 13, state, Russia, RT 12, GD 7. 14, stubborn, minded, RT 14, GD 10. 15, stalk, talk. RT-13, GD-5. Two strong complexes were aroused at Reaction 11, which were and are still important to her. 
Reaction 12 brought up thoughts of her approaching examination for the doctorate, quite enough to provoke an effect. Reaction 13 shows nothing special. Reaction 14 is verbal motor. The superficiality of this association points clearly to the distraction of attention shown again in the Klang Association 15. It is in consequence of this that the deviation reduced the probable mean by a half. In the Klang Association, mentioned so far with too long a deviation, the complex became known to the subject during the reaction. See, divorce, avoid. But I have a number of striking Klang Associations showing distinct lengthening of the deviation where the subject was quite unable to assert that the reaction in question was connected with any emotional event, with any complex at all. As apart from number one, I did not obtain many Klang associations in my tests. I have only a few examples to quote, but each one seems to me worthy study. They again show what great importance the unconscious has in association activity. The importance of the unconscious in association activity is most clearly seen in Freud's work, Interpretation of Dreams, Psychopathology of Everyday Life, Wit, etc. Footnote. See also Bluler, Chapter 6, Jung and Ricklin, Chapter 2, and Jung, Chapter 4. In his Psychology of Dementia Precox, Jung says, after having spoken of the influence of the complex upon association, it is of theoretical importance that the complex need not be conscious. By repression, it can cause an inhibition of attention in the conscious. In other words, it can suspend for a time the intellectual activity of consciousness, delayed reaction time, or suspend it totally, fault, or diminish its worth. Clang associations. End of footnote. We shall here venture on a proof of the influence of an unconscious or, as we prefer to say, of a repressed complex upon the development of affect, i.e., upon the physical innervations. Here again Freud has laid down the theoretical principles. In the interpretation of dreams, he says, this, i.e. the development of the affect, is regarded as a motor activity or as one of secretion. The key to its innovation is placed in the unconscious. Before dealing more closely with our examples, I should like to add some remarks about the method. It deviates in many respects from that hitherto customary in experimental psychology. In his Principles of Physiological Psychology, Wundt, when discussing the analysis of the emotion, says, It must, moreover, be noticed in all cases that the vasomotor, like the respiratory systems, are in themselves only signs of alterations of innervation in the respiratory, cardiac, and circulatory nerve centers. They convey nothing of themselves either about the causes of these symptoms, which are grounded in the mechanism of the nerve centers or about the remoter physiological connection of the innovations in question. The chief psychological value of these symptoms is rather that they are phenomena which are demonstrated objectively in so far as they regularly accompany emotional ideas. And by their differences, we are enabled to obtain indications of the corresponding psychical differences. But it should never be forgotten that these are only indications and never proofs. If subjective observation does not discover the presence of a definite emotion, no amount of objective phenomena can establish it. Experience teaches us, nevertheless, that traces of feelings can escape subjective observation if there is not some special motive for the attention being directed to them. What is here said of the vasomotor and respiratory symptoms must also refer to the galvanometric phenomena, about whose physiological foundation we have no absolutely certain knowledge. If we were to follow Wundt, it would be an error to attempt to discover the relationship of unconscious complexes, which introspection cannot detect, 
to physical symptoms, but it must have occurred to readers that we have not posited as the final authority for the connection of galvanometric with psychical differences any subjectively demonstrated emotion. In the association test, where the various emotions interchange so rapidly with one another, either increasing or hindering one another, subjective statements are to the nature or form of these feelings are quite unreliable. It is only gross differences of feeling, qualitative and quantitative, that are differentiated by introspection. One degrees that traces of feeling can escape introspection. I believe that the galvanometer, although the shunt does considerably deaden the oscillations of the current, is a far finer reagent for quantitative differences of emotion. As subjective control, we found, as we have sufficiently demonstrated, that a reaction which was accompanied by a too long deviation belonged to an emotionally toned complex. In the majority of cases, the subject feels the constellation, is often quick to recognize it, although sometimes only after reflection. But when the subjective proof of this connection is unobtainable, we have another means of discovering it. It is the method of psychoanalysis which psychology owes to Freud. It is to be used whenever the information given by a subject about a reaction is unsatisfactory. C, E, G, the reaction three, wall, star, in number one. And especially when repression influences the association so that its working is unknown to the subject, taking the view that unconscious psychic processes can provoke physical changes of innervation. Layman's remark will not lead us astray. An out-of-stimulus must enter consciousness in order to produce organic reactions. He makes consciousness equal psyche. Naturally, from this point of view, he is bound to conclude that if a definite external stimulus creates no definite state of consciousness, the organic reactions must be also absent. The contradiction between our view and layman's statement is that layman obviously recognizes only one mental process for the origin of organic reactions, whilst we also recognize unconscious mental processes. Footnote. In a certain sense, the stimulus, here the stimulus word, did reach the conscious and the case is now to be related. The subjects reacted to it with one word, afterwards remembering the stimulus word and so on. What did not reach consciousness was the relationship of the stimulus to a definite group of ideas. And even here, we must put a further limit. A reference to some complex or other is often more or less conscious to the subject as a feeling of constraint, some uncertainty. The reaction might refer to a complex, etc. But what is not conscious to them at all is the complex itself. End a footnote. The first example is from a doctor, number 16, who was kind enough to give me all the information possible. He himself succeeded in discovering the complex, repressed during and for a few hours after the experiment. Worry, source, RT9, parentheses 9, GV15, parentheses 9. The reaction time is the same. The probable mean of the deviation is, however, much increased. He felt at once impelled to seek some deeper connection between worry and source, a Klang reaction in German. Quellen, Quelle. It occurred to him, in analysis, that he was recently in the town of B with a female patient who was to be operated upon there. As this particular patient often comes into his associations, at other places, without giving rise to any increase of deviation, no significance could be attached to this idea. But, as will be seen, the town of B does point to the complex. At any rate, he did not know how he came to this association, and introspection failed to notice any distinct feeling during the reaction. 
there was no time for a thorough psychoanalysis. I was therefore greatly pleased when my colleague gave me the solution next day in writing. During the course of the evening, it came back to him that source equals fans amoris. Semper Ferni, fans amoris, was formerly one of his complex symbols. It was a question of a strong bachelor complex, which, when he lived in the town of B, was the source of much worry. The words Semper Terni, Fons Amoris, had become for both the symbol of friendship and service, being used as a formula in greeting. The matter becomes quite clear when we recall the whole strophe of Scheffel's student song, of which this was the first line. Semper Terni, Fons Amoris, Consolatrix Tristrium, Pia Mater Salvatoris, Ave Virga Virginum. That Fans Amoris has also a concrete meaning need be merely indicated. It is interesting that for years he had not thought of this episode in his life, and that it was only again noticed in his dreams after he had married, about six months before the test. By his marriage, the complex had at first increased the associations in the unconscious, thus allowing it to overcome the censure, first in his dreams and then in the waking consciousness. The next two examples are from myself. 28. Threaten. Drone. RT 14. Parentheses 9. GD 19. Parentheses 5. The reaction time and the deviation are markedly prolonged. I was not aware of any complex during the reaction, nor had I any particular feeling after I had uttered the reaction word. I felt some surprise about it. It seemed to me so remote, and I hardly felt that I myself had pronounced it, nor could I link at first any further associations to it, and gave up trying to find any meaning to this reaction. It was only two months later, after returning from a fortnight's journey and looking over my associations again, that its meaning became clear, without my then seeking it. It occurred just as my eyes fell on the reaction, the drone. That's me. My colleagues had often twitted me with my infrequent appearance in the wards and my not relieving them of some of the work. For bit by bit, I had limited myself entirely to the scientific work. A little of their banter had taken effect. Beyond the complete inner certainty that I felt as to the correctness of this interpretation, there is in its favor that I only found it after a journey which I had received many new impressions. My psychological constellation had become different, and so the inner resistances had become displaced. Furthermore, during the journey, my real interest in the part I played in the asylum had receded. C.P. Freud, Psychopathology of Everyday Life On the first day of my return, the complex had acquired an additional affect when I compared the strenuous work of my colleagues with my own life during the journey. My complex had perceived the opportunity for the application of the stimulus word to myself by a process of assimilation in the same way as in the other cases of misreading, misunderstanding, etc., which Freud has described in so masterly a way. To threaten is an unpleasurably toned word, and at the same time rather difficult to respond to. There was thus sufficient cause for inhibitory factors. The complex may have used this moment of hesitation. One of my subjects reacted to dry to this reaction. In that case, the time, but not the deviation, was increased. No reason for the occurrence of the word to dry could be found. There must certainly have been one. But on the other hand, Threaten was energetically parried, for the patient was a female nurse threatened with a crisis in a love affair, which for many reasons caused much excitement. It was likewise after that journey that I saw the following clang association. 73. Boz, angry, all, oil. RT9, parentheses 9. GD13, parentheses 15. Reproduction, Reflex. 
the series of associations was 71 to Cook Kitchen, RT7GD3, 72 Ink Fish, RT9GD3, Reproduction Right, 73 Pause All, RT9GD13, Reproduction Reflex, 74 Needle Ear, RT9, GD4, Reproduction, Prick, 75, To Swim, Prick, RT9, GD10. The many disturbances in reproduction, the meaningless clang association, boss, angry, all, oil, the perseveration of the association prick to swim, indicate a great disturbance of attention. This was partly conditioned by a certain degree of momentary fatigue at the time, but chiefly by several complexes. During this section of the experiment, I was at the same time the observer who went through the associations almost automatically. It was at the reaction to swim, prick, which seemed to me absurd, that I had a distinct feeling of unpleasure. The deviation is here increased. The clang association, pause, all, is the center of interest. Footnote, in uttering the word all, I had no image of it in consciousness, but merely the clang picture. End of footnote. This followed as automatically as the others. The reaction times nowhere exceed the mean. My interest in it only arose later when my attention had been turned to the action or repressed complexes upon physical innervations. Despite many attempts, I could get nothing out of it at first. It was only after my return, when I again took up the forgotten associations, that I distinctly felt that to find the solution, I must translate something. But the resistance was still so great that the right thing did not occur to me. I was still hitting away in the dark and translating oil, oleum, earl, oil, an attempt to get away from the O. Then I placed Bavs and all together and wrote in French orthography, Bursil, Sir, Burl, and similar words, most of them absurd. We shall presently see that the preceding was correct, but that I went astray in the choice of what to translate. It is remarkable that in my attempts I did hit upon the word Vessel, a station between Basley and Paris. But as there were other resistances to overcome, I was unable to make anything out of Paris. I gave it up, opining that there really was no solution here. Five days later, I was drawn back to this association. A thought occurred to me, which enabled me to penetrate into the unconscious and break up the chief resistance. At Bars, which I entirely neglected, putting all the weight on all, which I had not tried to translate. The proper name, Bars, came up to me. It had taken me two months. At once, an event which had taken place a year and a half before came up to me very clearly. How I had bought a trunk at Mr. Boss's, a leather merchant in X, and how at the last moment he had painted my monogram with a black fluid. See reaction, ink, fish. Reproduction, right. In Latin, characters on the brown trunk. At the same time, I became aware that I had always connected a yellow color with the sound O. The day after the purchase, I went to Paris. This only came up to me later, but it became already clear that all meant a simple LL, which was by clang assimilated to Bars. The complex was not cleared up. Trying to call up the monogram LB on the trunk, I had a feeling that the word trunk had to be translated. I did this step consciously, asking myself what was the French for trunk. Mal. The solution became instantly clear to me and was also shown involuntarily by a sigh. The M in Mal led to a monogram, MLB, 
that I had often seen in Latin letters, like my own LD on a trunk. It is the monogram of that lady who had in the first place suggested my buying the trunk, and who, in the second place, had intended traveling to Paris with me, an intention which, however, was not carried out. I had been very put out by this. Only in this roundabout way did it become clear who was meant by angry. Pause. It must be added that this complex is only the portion of a much bigger one which is still present. Pause. Angry. Thus led to angry. Trunk. L.B. Mall. And thus to M.L.B. There is also a more direct way from Boz to MLB, by the translation into Mao. But here the Latin seems to take part, as indicated by my first association to all, oleum. Mao would be the exact Latin equivalent for Boz, angry in this case. The French Mal is only a hint. Mal also allowed me to understand when I wrote down the analysis why to the following stimulus word, needle, ear, was reacted. In the reproduction, I thought I had said prick. It seems highly probable that malheur had determined ear, er, both by its clang and its meaning. It was also now clear why at the beginning I felt compelled to connect the words pause and all and write them in French. It was just as if someone had said to me, Translate into French, combine them, and write down a German clang in French letters. That will give you the answer. We see that the unconscious prescribes the way that psychoanalysis must follow. We know now that a translation had to be made. Boss into mal, written in French. Or, here, mal and her, combined into malheur. The word malheur was the summit of the analysis. At boss, the clang picture, or, had become aroused together with the clang picture, all. For from boss to mal, and from mal to malheur, is but a short step. This must, however, have been the stronger, for it provoked the corresponding innervation of the speech musculature. Whilst or remained unsaid and unconscious, It was only when the word needle followed that the clang picture or, which lay ready waiting, received a stronger impulse and repressed the reaction word prick, which for me was a more labile one. This again appears in the following reaction. Only the chief stages of the analysis can be given here, whilst the psychical impulses of the whole mechanism can only be hinted at. But I hope that I have shown through my trial and error how the psychical course of such an introspection proceeds. The inner feeling of certainty which accompanies such a task can naturally not be communicated to others. Those who attempt analysis on themselves will be the first to adopt our methods. It is not to be wondered at, a repressed complex which, despite repression, causes physical reactions, expresses itself preferentially in clang associations. It would seem that the common occurrence of clang associations and physical reactions are an indication of the strength of a repressed complex, or rather of the resistance which a reflexed complex has to overcome in order to become conscious. This resistance was striking in all three cases, especially in my own. The occurrence of clang associations is only a sign that the complex is held back by the censure, and, just as in dreams, there only manifests itself in innocent shape. It is a fair conclusion that a repressed complex evokes physical reactions, or, in other words, effects, when there is strong resistance to its becoming conscious. I have one other example in which I can prove by the galvanometer the working of a repressed complex. It manifested itself in an educated lady and was as follows. Subject number 19, 20, eat, eat, dinner. RT 18, parenthesis 16. GD 18, parenthesis 16. 
reproduction, long reflection. Four complex signs. Repetition of the stimulus word. Disturbance in reproduction. Prolonged reaction time and prolonged deviation. She is surprised at the stimulus word. That in itself points to a complex. Obviously, the word itself cannot cause surprise. But the surprise is a hint that something strange, i.e. unconscious, is going on within her. She had great resistance for a long time, maintaining that nothing occurred to her. Finally, a smile heralded the solution. She does not like eating with her relations before strangers and does not like visitors at her table because people would then see that she does not like one of her relations, an aunt. The reason of this antipathy was not communicated, nor did I press for it. It is very probable that this antipathy to the aunt exhibits the complex concealed here. A very pretty example of the influence of a repressed complex on the psychogalvanic complex is given by Jung and Peterson. Brain, 1907. It occurred in a male nurse who was very emotional. The same series of stimulus words was used three times in succession, a method which brings out the working of a repressed complex particularly well. The greatest deviation occurred with the association, the sun burns. Other strong deviations were at the associations, floor, parquet, pay, right, warm, the stove. In the last three reactions, there were constant disturbances. All the reproductions were altered. With one exception, all the deflections exceeded the arithmetical mean of each of the series. Of the nine reactions, four were above, and two coincided with the probable mean. The patient said he had no particular thoughts in connection. With these reactions, it was not himself aware of anything. But when asked what personal significance Floor had for him, he suddenly answered, with surprise and embarrassment, that recently a stove had become defective and burned the floor to such an extent that not only the stove but the greater part of the floor had to be renewed. He had to pay for this himself, which meant great expense. Besides, there had been great danger from fire. Thus all the disturbances above recorded were completely explained, including the strong emotional tone of sun burns. The strong resistance on the part of the conscious shows that the patient had not become aware of the complex in the three tests, despite the numerous stimulus words and its recent occurrence. End of section 53